So hello and welcome. My name is Steve Nabell, and today I'm speaking with Jen Ward on manifesting wealth and abundance. And Jen is a dynamic healer, executive coach, and group facilitator. She's devoted her life to helping others unlock their true potential. She's an accomplished writer, poet, the author of several books, including Manifest Wealth and Abundance and the SFT Lexicon. And her website is genuinehealing.com. There'll be a link going out with this podcast. So hi, hi Jen. Hi, Steve. Nice to, uh, nice to see you. As, as we mentioned before, I was kind of like taken by all your teddy bears behind you. <laughs> I, I'm like really proud of that because I don't like, I, I try to teach people to get out of the mind and get yeah. into the heart. So that's a manifestation of getting out of the heart and, and getting out of the mind and, and going into the heart and everything. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Can I ask you a bit about your journey towards the work you're doing now? I, I mm-hmm. guess you weren't born thinking I'm going to be a SFT therapy dealer. Yeah, no. What were you, what's your journey? Oh my gosh. So this journey is not just one lifetime. I've been, I've been working at this for, for a lot of lifetimes. Um, just born into a big dysfunctional family, alcoholics, poverty, low, low, whatever, low consciousness in a way. And um, I was the youngest of 10. Well, the mother cursed me in utero. She tried to get rid of me the whole time, tried to um, do everything but abort me. So not, you know, pickled me out with alcohol and try to knock herself down steps and try to hit her stomach, all of this. And when I was born, she just cursed me. And she really did hate me. And so so and all the nine siblings were trained to not give me any attention or love they kept me in a room upstairs for the first few years of my life and stuff and i had a speech impediment and um Mm. and and growth impediment and everything and it was just i didn't know i was special at all um until way 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 later when when i I started going to um, uh, the spiritual guy. He does body talk, which is an alternative kind of energy work. And I started, he started introducing me to other energy workers who they all said they were told by their spirit guides to do anything and everything they could to help me heal. And so I um, got myself through massage therapy school and I realized then I could move energy with my intentions. So when other people were just doing hands-on, I was like moving the um, moving energy through and blockages. I was feeling it and moving it out of the body with my intentions. And then people started to fight over me in, in, in the, um, clinic they wanted me to be the one working on them because it was just and it was just an antithesis to what I understood about myself so then I put up a shingle as a massage therapist and everybody who came to me kept saying that their spirit guides they were praying they were contemplating and their spirit guide said they had to come and have a session with me and so everything I was doing at that point was supposed to be about massage therapy but it was energy work at a, a very deep level level and it's just continued from there. Wow. And how did you come across um, the work you're doing now, the kind of uh, healing, tapping work? Well, in body tech, they use tapping a little bit. And I kind of outgrew the, the protocol that he, the, the facilitator was using on me. I actually ended up hooking up with this sociopath who um, actually locked me up and tried to starved me to death and tortured me for a year and then I went through the process of enlightenment and it it's a real it's a real process where you bypass you get over the ego and you're like drained of the ego it's just and then like for three days you have to like you live in this blissful state and then it comes back in and you think you're evil again and it's a whole process so I did that with with this guy and um when I came back after being locked up and escape in that experience um the, the adapts just worked with me I thought I was a retarded boy because of all the brainwashing and everything and so I just started to create these taps and put them out on social media and that was the way I healed 
and more and more people would like say they benefited from them and then I would start to write about my experiences and I started taking clients on again and they had miraculous results wow. and and I was trained to like keep it as a dirty little secret but the more I shared on social me media I realized how much people are starving that they're literally starving to understand this stuff. And I never, you know, thought of myself as an expert in anything because I was told to shut up my whole life. But the way I, I thought within my psyche and my, I figured things out in my imagination and creativity and with talking to the adepts, I realized that I had a point of view that could help people. So wow. that's how it started. Why do you think is that so many people in the spiritual communities struggle with, with money and abundance? Because they're trained. It's programming and conditioning. You hear it all the time. They say things like, oh, I didn't do this healing. Um, I was just a facilitator. So they're trained not to be worthy. But I've never heard of a plumber come to the house and, and you say, thank you for fixing my pipes. You'll never hear a plumber say, oh, I didn't do anything. It was the pipes that did all the work. I just facilitated the pipes. So, 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 so people are trained to be unworthy and to just not to value that. And they have to like, they have to reprogram it for themselves and for other healers. When when I came back, I was afraid of the energy work because I was told I was evil and, and this by the, the sociopath. So what I did was I put a very high price point on, on my work. It was high to me because I came from nothing. So it was like $150 for a session with me, which was like, which could have been like a thousand dollars. And I did that. So to keep people away, because I didn't want to do the work and I go, well, if they really want it, they will come to me and people came for that. So that's a technique that um, healers and facilitators can use is put a high price point on themselves because you're telling the universe that you matter. Yeah. And then when, when we want to help people, we want to help people. So we do it for free and for nothing. But what we're doing is telling the universe and these people who come to us are agreeing to it that we're not worth what we deserve to be paid for. So it's almost like we're, we're entering into this agreement by settling for nothing. Yeah, understand um, that one. Yeah. So, so people will say, well, I just paid all this for the vet. I paid this for this. I don't have any money for you. And then they want, then they want the healer to do the work. And then do you hear what they just said? They put worth into the vet, they put worth into this, they put worth into that and paid that. They agreed that they va had value. And then when it comes to you, they're not agreeing that you have value. So, so that's the reason I developed this SFT protocol is because it's my way of helping everybody out there. Because as dynamic healers, we don't want to turn anyone away, but we don't want to agree to be... be um, not worth it so i've developed this sft protocol of clearing those blockages to manifestation so anybody can use it but then if you want to go above and beyond and have a private session with me then you're going to agree that i am worth it and then we'll sit down together but everyone mm -hmm. i'll help anyone inwardly even now i think you've also written in your book manifest wealth and abundance that people can have a concept can conceptualize monetary gain as negative mm -hmm. why would yeah. they do that <laughs> oh so think about in past lifetimes um about you see this they associate wealth with um being um evil or being like um selfish or being unholy because even in our religious teachings it says you know um the poor are closer to god which yeah. I'm not sure that's really true, but but it was a good story at the time when everybody was like angry at the fat cats. So so think of in a past life, because I see people's past engrams, I see their past lives. So I see people who have this aversion to wealth and they see someone who's who's got a lot of money 
who's cruel and indifferent to people. And then they curse themselves, basically. They say, I'll never do that. I never want to abuse money. I never want to be like that. So they basically have set themselves up from a past lifetime with kind of like a curse on themselves. So the SFT protocol helps them remove these curses and those kind of belief systems, amongst Fantastic. other things. And it was in, in your book on, on Wealth and Abundance, I read about a client and you said this client, it worked a long time, but he had these deep issues around money. The first one was his preference for bartering. He felt bartering was better. He wanted to kind of, a, a, had an aversion to money. Um, he kind of wanted to micromanage the universe. And the second mm -hmm. one was he really disliked banks and bankers. I, can, I think a lot of people relate to that one mm -hmm. <laughs> these days. And um, it was really blocking his, his financial gain. How, can you say something about him and how you helped him get over this? Uh, this? Well, it's not like I remember him exactly because I've had tons of clients. Yeah. But I but I do know that people's understanding of the banking system is kind of wrong. Um, the whole banking system goes against spiritual law because yeah. money is just energy. And so energy needs to flow. And if it doesn't flow, it becomes stagnant. Even water, if it's if it doesn't flow, it becomes stagnant. And energy in the body, that's how pain and disease is the stagnant energy in the body. And that's what I help people release. So yeah. when you're taught to hoard money and save it away and put it in the bank and, and scrounge, you're actually creating the stagnant state of consciousness for yourself. Right. So 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 that's why people, people who are like really rich and good with money, they they move their money around and they um, create these different flows for their money. And those of us on a lower scale, just tipping someone, just paying so for something that you want and, and agreeing that you deserve that is a form of sending out the intention that money will come and trusting it. So moving that energy as much as you can. So that's, that's one of the way I, I taught him, but, but then with the SFT protocol, I would take um, a core belief that money is evil. Mm -hmm. And I created, I created this whole SFT protocol that releases all the karmic um, um, inconsistencies and in, like your belief system, your understanding with the money and, and break it down to a core issue like the belief that money is evil. And then I've created this pro protocol that people can get on my website or in my, you know, my SFT lexicon book, page 38. And it's like 42 taps, SFT taps that we're going to do a little bit later. Yeah, It's all on um, releasing the, under the belief system that money is evil. Yeah. So you can say it till you're blue in your face, but you have, when you, when you just say affirmations, you know how affirmations don't work for everyone? Mm -hmm. It's because affirmations are working from the mind, which is at the same level of consciousness as the ego. So the same, so I could tell, say to the mind a million times a day, I'm rich beyond compare, but then I'm going to have the ego um, just, just bombard me with say, you can't even earn a living, whatever. And it'll just be, be like threatening and, 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 and just berating you because that's what the ego does. So what the SFT tapping does, it bypasses the, the ego. You don't need the ego to agree with it. And a lots of times the, the way that I um, word the tapping, we tap it like we release resonating with poverty. Now the mind does not know how to work with you, when you think of yourself as a frequency of sound and an emanation of light woven into form, which is what basically we are. And so when you, when you address yourself as a, a sound frequency or a light emanation or a vibration of any kind, the ego does not know how to refute that. So yes. you've snuck past the ego and you can manifest what your higher, what your higher self wants you to manifest for yourself fantastic well my, my next line I, i've written down was the idea that money's evil you kind of jumped you got me mm -hmm. you must have read my mind there i was oh, going to yeah. ask because i had this one money I, I used to have this one 
And the, the, I realized there's a whole thing of religion, isn't there? And vows of agreements and on the floor, mm -hmm. scrubbing the floors. And it has to be a hard life. If you want to, if you want to be spiritual, then money is out of the equation. Well, what's really interesting is in past lives, this was the first set of tasks that I came up with to really help someone was when they recanted their, uh, recanting their vows and agreements. So in past lifetimes, most of us have spent a stint in a monastery or two. And in past lives, think about it. We took vows of poverty, chastity, unworthiness, servitude, obedience, solitude, all these, ta all these things. And we... We knew about past, we knew about um, reincarnation. We weren't stuck in the one mind um, scenario back then. So we took these vows forever. So lots of people think they're not attracting the love of their life because they're not pretty enough or they're, they're not this or they're not this, or God is punishing them or God wants them to be poor. No, they set it up. They set up the conditions that they have in a past scenario, and it's up to them to consciously change the scenario. So one of the things we do is we can't all the vows. Um, cool. and, that, and I've seen people come into money the next day after they do the vows of poverty. So, yeah, it's really exciting to do that. We're going to do them together. We're going to do some of this together in a bit. I just want to ask you one more question before we actually do something. Mm -hmm. um, in your book on manifestation, uh, you talked about the spiritual law of reversed efforts, that the harder you try to have something, the further away it will be. I, I mean, I've noticed one over and over again in my own life, but can you say something about that? Well, the easiest way to explain it is in relationships. Like, you know, when you're like, like are attracted to someone and, and you try to chase them and they want nothing to do with you. And then when you like, just give up and say, forget it. You know, I'm not interested. It's too much work. And then that person comes running over and wants to be with you. That kind of thing that works with anything you're trying to manifest. So when you are working to manifest these things, you can't put your focus on them. Like, like the mind will push them away. It's almost like, um, it's got a, a charge, the same charge as the thing, and they repulse. So what you have to do is change your charge of it and um, almost like be indifferent to it. Yeah. Like you, And that's why the tapping is so beautiful, because you can do the tapping for it in a pro proactive way and then just relax and just trust that it'll happen because it, it happens for other people. And you can see how it helps other people so it's amazing that's beautiful well i'm um, let's do some Jane. okay i'm open great. to yeah all right <laughs> okay so, mm, 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 mm. so when i make these noises what i'm basically doing is it's stagnant energy and i am converting stagnant energy into sound which is another form of energy and just dissipating it so and i can tune into like people who are listening to this in the future and help them actually release the shifts. Mm, 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 mm. So the first, how we do a tap is I'm going to give you something to say. I'm going to say it three times. We'll tap on the top of your head. A fourth time we'll tap in your chest and a fifth time we'll tap in on the abdomen. So what's happening when we tap on the head is we're, we're programming it into the brain right? Because the, the body, the energy system is trying to fix everything at once. And it scans your body to know what needs to fix. And it puts it on a laundry list. There's so much going on. But this is your conscious way of saying this is number one priority, please take care of this first. Then you tap it into the chest. So it like, it, it just sets it in there as a priority. And then you tap on the abdomen because some of this energy likes to scurry away from the body and go into the pelvic bowl or, or um, just collect there. So that prevents it from just like hiding out there in the body and, and laying dormant. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the first one we want to do is we want to recant. <clears throat> we recant. And I say we instead of I, because when people say I am, they don't realize that the ego is, 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 is basically like the surveillance of the body. And it's like Siri, when you, you ask Siri a question, it's going to like perk up and say, okay, pay attention. So when people use I, it's telling the ego to perk up and here's something we just want to address. 
So we say we and do it we. with the collective. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. You can think of the we as me and you or your spirit guides or the collective. It's one of those or all of those, whatever you want to believe it is, but it's a we. Okay. We recant our vow of poverty. Then we pause and then say in all moments. So we're addressing this in past, present, and future. So it's not, we're collecting all the times when you, you said that and where the effects of that and bringing all the energy and convert it into empowerment in the moment, just from that one tap. Okay. So, yeah. We, we recant, recant. We recant. But you can't. Our vow of poverty. Our vow of poverty. In all moments. In all moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You want to do it? Yeah. You say it. And I'll tap. We recant all, all vows of poverty in all moments. <laughs> Keep three times, two more. But we recant all vows of poverty in all moments. <laughs> Pause before in all moments, because that's when I ah. scoop out the energy. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> we recant all vows of poverty. In all moments. <laughs> Again? Yeah, and here. Yep. We recant all vows of poverty in all moments. <laughs> we recant all vows of poverty. The abdomen. Oh, down there. just once there, yeah? Yeah. Okay. We recant all vows of poverty. In all moments. Okay, so there's someone, someone either here, you or someone, a little bit of you, but other people who um, <clears throat> believe that they have to work hard to make the money. So they're like, um, <clears throat> we release work in ourselves to death in all moments. We release work in ourselves to death. In all moments. Mm, good. <laughs> <laughs> Again, yeah? yeah? We release working ourselves to death in all moments. Mm -hmm. We release working ourselves to death in all moments. Mm -hmm. Chest. Mm -hmm. We release working ourselves to death in all moments. We release working ourselves to death in all moments. Good. Now, as you're saying that energetically, the higher self, the collective, or you or someone is telling me the next tabs to do. Yeah. So it wants to recant all vows of self-deprivation. Oh, okay. We recant all vows of self-deprivation in all moments. We recant all vows of self-deprecation in all moments. Okay, we did say deprivation this time. We're going to do deprecation, but that's the next one. Oh, deprecation, yeah. deprecation. Debra See, when you don't get, when you, when you get it wrong, there's an ego saying this is, the ego's trying to mess with it. So it's telling you it's dead on. There's a, there's a vow of self-deprivation that you're releasing now. We yeah. recant all vows of self-deprivation in yeah. our moments. We re recount all vows of self-deprecation. Recant. recant. The, yeah. <laughs> and all vows of self deprecation in all moments. Deprivation. Deprivation. Oh. See how it, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is the ego. That's okay. This is great. <laughs> That's strange, isn't it? We recant all vows of self deprivation in all moments. <laughs> we recant all vows of self deprecation. Deprivation. Deprivation. I like it. It's a deprivation <laughs> in all moments. See, and you're an intelligent guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know why it keeps flicking. We the recount ego. all vows of self deprivation in all moments. <laughs> we recount all vows of self. We can't. Recant you say recount. Do I say recount? We recant all vows of self <laughs> deprivation. In all moments, <laughs> we recant 
all vows of self deprivation in all moments. So there's one before the deprecation one that you need to do personally. Yeah. We recant all vows of martyrdom. Oh, in our gosh, moments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do I do it now? Yeah. Please. We, re we recant all vows of martyrdom in all, what was it, in all moments? In all, mm -hmm. in it's all always moments. in all moments. Yeah. All moments. We recant all vows of martyrdom in all moments. <laughs> we recant all vows of martyrdom in all moments. We recant all vows of martyrdom in all moments. <laughs> we recant all vows of martyrdom in all moments. Good. Now let's do the deprecation because people out there need the deprecation one. Deprecate. We recant all vows of self-deprecation. We recant all vows of self-deprecation in all moments. Mm -hmm. We recant all vows of self-deprecation in all moments. We recant all vows of self-deprecation in all moments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we recant all vows of self-deprecation <clears throat> in all moments. We recant all vows of self-deprecation in all moments. We release all muscle memory of poverty in all moments. We release all muscle memory of poverty in all moments. <laughs> We release all muscle memory of poverty in all moments. We release all muscle memory of poverty in all moments. We release all muscle memory of poverty in all moments. We release all muscle memory of poverty in all moments. Mm -hmm. yeah. so what we're doing is we're basically we're we're working on the <clears throat> the poverty issue from not only the physical standpoint but the emotional the causal for your cash records the mental and the etheric realms so yeah. <clears throat> We release the genetic propensity. So we're going to remove it from your DNA. We release the genetic propensity to be poor in all moments. We release the genetic propensity to be poor in all moments. <laughs> we release the genetic propensity to be poor in all moments. <laughs> we release the genetic propensity to be poor in all moments. We release the genetic propensity to be poor in all moments. We release the genetic propensity to be poor in all moments. I so hope everyone's going to be joining in with me, uh, us. Yeah, well, yeah. do you see me like releasing and everything? I can... I can feel it helping you, but I can also feel it helping others. And and um, there's another one that's not exactly manifestation, but it is people need to remove the curses on them yeah. because all the curses, it can be as nefarious as you think it is, but just someone by derailing your intentions for yourself and, and inflicting their intentions for you is a curse. So parents curse their children all the time and saying, you're not going to make anything of yourself unless you become a doctor. That can be a curse. It's it's not okay. Yeah. So we remove all curses on us in our moments. We release all curses on us in all moments. Can you do me a favor and just do it the, the exact way I said it? Because we remove all curses on us. We remove said, all yeah. curses on it's us. Said release. So just oh. I did I say release? It's remove, isn't it? Yeah. We remove all curses on us in all moments. <laughs> we remove all curses on us in all moments. 
<laughs> we remove all curses on us in all moments. <laughs> We remove all curses on us in all moments. Okay, I want to do another one along that vein for, for people listening. It's, it's blessings have a very short shelf life. So, so this woman came to me, she had really bad Lou Gehrig's disease and she was bre- bedridden and everything. And I tapped into her past lifetimes and she was a... Um, like a servant out in the cotton fields and all she did from sunrise to sunup was she picked cotton and so her blessing in that lifetime was I just wish I could just lay in bed all day long and everybody would wait on me and bring everything to me so she wanted to have servants and stuff but so she had her blessing came to this lifetime she was waited on hand and foot but it's because she can't move and can't She's, oh, yeah, so that's a blessing and it's got a short shelf life. So, um, <laughs> mm, 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 mm. we remove all blessings in all moments, we remove all blessings in all moments, mm, 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 mm. we remove all blessings in all moments. Mm. We remove all blessings in all moments. We remove all blessings in all moments. We remove all blessings in all moments. So the tapping can't be used to like do anything negative. So it's only going to take out the negative vibrations. Yeah. So people are worried that if they say blessings, they're going to release something good from themselves, but they're not. They're going to release all the mental and misunderstandings and not the real blessings. Mm-hmm. Did we do programming and conditioning yet? No. We remove all programming and conditioning to be poor in all moments. We remove all programming and conditioning to be poor in all moments. Mm -hmm. We remove all programming and conditioning to be poor in all moments. Mm -hmm. We remove all programming and conditioning to be poor in all moments. Mm -hmm. We remove all programming and conditioning to be poor in all moments. We remove all programming and conditioning to be poor in all moments. Oof. Also, so, someone out there needs to understand that the um, the understanding of humility is is false because humility is not like the unworthiness. The true you and I basically are humble. The, the true definition of humility is to know what a dynamic person you are, but also afford that to everyone else. So what you're doing is raising the level of consciousness on everyone else instead of lowering yeah. the bar. Yeah. <laughs> we, re- we remove... <laughs> We release all unworthiness in all moments. We release all unworthiness in all moments. Mm -hmm. We release all unworthiness in all moments. We release all unworthiness in all moments. We release all unworthiness in all moments. We release unworthiness in all moments. So in this in this book, the SFT lexicon, there is, um, and they can get it on my website. There's another protocol besides the energetic cleanse, and it's a protocol where you release. It's called the peanut butter and jelly cleanse. And it's releasing two things from each other. Like if peanut butter and jelly didn't want anything to do with each other anymore, they yeah. would do this technique and they'd be free of each other. Yeah. So so a lot of people have the understanding that wealth. That's that spirituality um, is being poverty. So those things need to be disconnected. Um, 
I'm going to do you guys a favor, okay? I'm going to do um, a zip one for this because I'm going to do what I teach the people in my um, in my subscription group and, and people who have been doing the tabs is how to do a zip one. So we're going to do like 42 taps on this all at once. And you may feel it. You feel energy, right? Do you get yeah. a sense of this, what we're doing? Yeah. So it's called the PB and J cleanse. So we're going to do the zip line. So I'm going to say it and you're going to tap and everyone who wants this blessing are going to do it. So we energetically, we, when I can't say, it, you know, it's juicy. We energetically complete the PB and J protocol between spirituality and poverty in all moments because people are thinking those two are the same yeah. <laughs> we energetically complete the pb and j protocol between spirituality and poverty in all moments we energetically complete the pb and j protocol between spirituality and poverty in all <laughs> we energetically complete the pb and j protocol between spirituality and poverty in all moments. We energetically complete the PB and J protocol between the spirituality and poverty in all moments. Do you feel the joy coming in? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we energetically complete the PB and J protocol between spirituality and poverty in all moments. <laughs> can 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 we do one for someone who really needs this one? out there and um we release the belief that we're separate from source in all moments we release the belief we're separate from source in all moments <laughs> we release the belief we're separate from source in all moments we release the belief we're separate from source in all moments we release the belief we're separate from source in all moments we release the belief we're separate from source in all moments. So a, lo a lot of your listeners who want abundance and stuff, they have in past lifetimes, they have created a hell for themselves. And so as they're like trying to mind their own business and go through this life as best as they can, part of themselves is still in the engrams of living in hell. <clears throat> so if, can we do this public service and remove them from hell for them? Yeah. Yeah. And there's one that goes along with, with that too, and it's coming through really strong. We release the belief that God is punishing us in our moments. Okay. So, so you do that. We release the belief that God is punishing us in all moments. <laughs> we release the belief that God is punishing us in all moments. Mm. Mm. We release the belief mm. that God is punishing us <clears throat> in all moments. Mm. We release the belief that God is punishing us in all moments. We release the belief that God is punishing us in all moments. So you know how you had that cough and everything? <clears throat> yeah. You know what you know what's happening there? With I that? think it's some form of letting go of release, isn't it? Yes, but it's it may be yours, but in this case, one of your listeners who's gonna hear this has been poisoned in a past lifetime and they're in a lot of pain. Can we do that for them? And, yeah. and we release being poisoned in all moments. We release being poisoned in all moments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We release being poisoned in all moments. Mm -hmm. We release being poisoned in all moments. Mm -hmm. We release being poisoned in all moments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We release being poisoned in all moments. We remove ourselves from hell in all moments. We remove ourselves from hell in all moments. <laughs> we remove ourselves from hell in all moments. 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 
you get a sense how we're going deeper into what the audience is listening to? Do you mind doing a couple more? Because sure. people <laughs> suffer. And I, as long as I can do this, I'm happy to. Some people think that they're crazy because they don't understand the energy. They're feeling so much and they don't know how to articulate it in this linear world. We release the belief that we're crazy in all moments. We release the belief that we're crazy in all moments. <laughs> We release the belief that we're crazy in all moments. We release the belief that we're crazy in all moments. We release the belief that we are crazy in all moments. We release the belief that we are crazy in all moments. We release punishing ourselves 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 in all moments. <laughs> Do you feel the lightness? Like you can feel yeah. it. And then <laughs> this is so enjoyable doing this with you and helping people. There's another strong one coming through that's really important to someone or a few. We release living with the enemy in all moments. We release living with the enemy in all moments. We release living with the enemy in all moments. We release living with the enemy in all moments. <laughs> We release living with the enemy in all moments. We release living with the enemy in all moments. So how surreal can we get with these? Uh, is your audience open? Yeah, of course. Yes, yes. We release being abandoned on earth in all moments. Oh, yeah. We release being abandoned on earth in all moments. Mm, 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 we release being abandoned on earth in all moments. Mm, 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 we release being abandoned on earth in all moments. Mm, 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 we release being abandoned on earth in all moments. Mm, 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 we release being abandoned on earth in all moments. So you want a juicy one? Okay. We release being trapped in the daisy of death. In all moments. We release being trapped in the daisy of death in all moments. <laughs> we release being trapped in the daisy of death in all moments. <laughs> we release being trapped in the daisy of death in all moments. We release being trapped in the daisy of death in all moments. We release being trapped in the daisy of death in all moments. <laughs> <laughs> We take back. <clears throat> this is what a shaman is. A shaman moves energy. We take, and this is what the protocol is doing: is teaching someone to be their own shaman. Because I know how to do this. We take back everything that was taken from us in all moments. We take back everything that was taken from us in all moments. <clears throat> we take back everything that was taken from us in all moments. <clears throat> We take back everything that was taken from us in all moments. We take back everything that was taken from us in all moments. We take back everything that was taken from us in all moments. Mm. I'm kind of just showing off now a little bit because it's like there's so much that's so excited. We, we erase slavery from our soul contract in all moments we erase slavery from our soul contract in all moments <laughs> we erase slavery from our soul contract in all moments we erase slavery from our soul contract in all moments we erase slavery from our soul contract in all moments <laughs> we erase slavery from our soul contract in all moments Mm. So I'm starting to feel people who are going to be 
viewing this, I feel their energy waking up for the first time. Like they didn't know that they were, they felt like they were blocked from their energy opening up. Um, yeah. Some people have a sore, they have like a um, weak back. It's because in our um, archetypal body, we have a tail. And when people who, who prefer that tripod of the tail and the legs feel weak in the human body, so we reattach our tail in our moments. We reattach our tail in all moments. Mm -hmm. We reattach our tail in all moments. Mm -hmm. We reattach our tail in all moments. We reattach our tail in all moments. We reattach our tail in all moments. I don't basically understand this one but someone needs this one and i don't delve here but this is where someone wants to do we strip all illusion off of the overlords in our moments we strip all illusions off the overlords in all moments <laughs> we strip all illusions off of the overlords in all moments we strip all illusions off the overlords in all moments we strip all illusions off the overlords in all moments we strip all illusions off the overlords in all moments we reconnect to our tribe in all moments we reconnect to our tribe in all moments we reconnect to our tribe in all moments. 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 Can I do this one? It's kind of long, but it's kind of juicy too. Mm -hmm. It, what, I'm, what it's going to say is we dissipate all psychic streams of energy that subjugate us into the third dimension. Am I just tapping with you? Yes. Okay. We dissipate all psychic streams of energy that subjugate us into in the third dimension in all moments. We dissipate all psychic streams of energy that subjugate us in the third dimension. <laughs> In our moments, we dissipate all psychic streams of energy that subjugate us in the third dimension. In our moments, we dissipate all psychic streams of energy that subjugate us in the third dimension. In our moments, <clears throat> we dissipate all psychic streams of energy that subjugate us in the third dimension. In our moments. <laughs> so for the people who are looking for help out there, the third protocol that I have there is um, in the SFT book, and it's also on my website. It's called the Expansion, Expansion Negativity Taps. But what it basically is, is um, <laughs> it's a badass exorcism taps. So if there's any people who think they're possessed or they whatever, or um, energies are controlling them, they can do this this um, expunge and negativity tasks and get rid of those. So one more, do you mind us doing yes, that? Right. For, yes, and right. I'm going to do it for everyone. And I'm going to do the, the short one because people are really looking for help and they've come to you and you're their best chance of getting help right now. So this is great. So okay. <laughs> we... We energetically complete the expunge and negativity taps for all energies that are controlling us in our moments. So I'll say it. <laughs> we energetically complete the expunge and negativity taps for all energies that are controlling us in our moments. We energetically complete the expunge and negativity taps for all energies that are controlling us in our moments. We energetically complete the expunge and negativity taps for all energies that are, are controlling us in our moments. We energetically complete the sponge and negativity tabs for all energies that are controlling us in our moments. We energetically complete the sponge and negativity tabs for all energies that are controlling us in our moments. So people might not realize it, but 
like while I'm doing those, I'm basically doing battle for them because I've ascribed a lot of this healing stuff to my parasympathetic nervous system by doing it so much. I've just been doing it and doing it. So what would be really scary for them to address is just like for me, please. Yeah. And so, so in energy, I'm just like knocking it out for them. And I'd be interesting to see if it helps anybody out there. Yeah, well, this is going to go up on YouTube, but there'll be lots of comments, I'm sure, under this one. Okay. And yeah. I'll put it out all over the place. And I'm, okay. I'm going to get that book. I think I should get the book. It's great. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> this is great. This is like a textbook for life. So the adepts um, that worked with me and kept me alive, because there were a lot of energies trying to destroy me this lifetime, right? And I kept alive. And there were a lot of energies trying to prevent me from being with my husband, who is dynamic in his own right who's edited in the books the adepts told me to get this book out and people were seeing this years ago before it was even written and they were saying your first book is like this it's like they call it like the bible for the fifth dimension because it's not about what you should do it's what what to do to empower yourself totally so there's no shoulds in it but everything about releasing and, and it's like the adepts tell me that as in the third dimension, everything's degeneration, right? It, like you, it wears out. But in the fifth dimension, everything is regeneration. Mm. So it's just about maintaining this level. So we're basically in the fifth dimension and we basically have to just like um, release our, our creature comforts, our old engrams, our old belief systems that are preventing us from being as free and as powered as we can in the fifth dimension. Uh, um, and that's why it's so easy for me to do the healing is because it's already done. Everyone's yeah. already there. They just need to realize it. It's really exciting times. Fantastic. Well, it's amazing talking with you, Jen. I really enjoyed our time together. <laughs> I, <laughs> I feel enjoyed, cleared. <laughs> I'm really um, grateful for you for being so receptive and helping me help your people and and just being open I'm really thrilled do you feel my love yeah I do I do, I do. <laughs> <laughs> the love Thank is the conduit so <laughs> the love is the conduit and it's like you can't you can't not feel empowered with the love because it's just so incredible and if you're feeling that love it, it's it's not it's not a lower form of love it's just that pure joy love abundance freedom house success that's wonderful well, thanks so much, Jen, for speaking with me this morning. Thank you so much. When will this go out so I can tell my people? Uh, in a day, maybe today, tomorrow. Awesome. Well, I really, really appreciate talking to you. And if you ever need me, I'm here for you, okay?